Good morning, Friends Church. My name is Emily, and we're so grateful that you've decided to join us for the first of three times that we will meet online today to worship Jesus and remember what it is that he did for us through the cross. In a moment, Pastor Chris will be joining us um, to share some thoughts on today. But before we do that, why don't we spend some time worshiping together? beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which my the chosen Bring many sons to glory Upon his shoulders, ashamed I hear my knocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me. I know that it is Friends Church, today is obviously a very important day because today we get the opportunity to commemorate what is truly one of the most significant days in all of history. When nearly 2,000 years ago, the creator of the universe, our God, gave his life for our sake on our behalf. And in order to commemorate all that today represents, today we're going to take a journey together. We're going to meet three times throughout the day in order to get a taste of what Jesus himself experienced on the day that he was crucified. We're going to visit Jesus in a sense at three different times on that very first Good Friday. And through it all, we're going to learn a little bit more about our Savior and a little bit more about who we, his followers, are called to be at all times. 
but especially in this unique season in which we find ourselves. And so we begin here in the morning. And it was in the very early hours in the morning, before dawn, in fact, when the first major event of the day of Jesus' crucifixion occurred. I'm in Matthew chapter 26 here. And Jesus is standing right now before a group of people known as the Sanhedrin, who were sort of the Jewish Supreme Court of the time. And Jesus has been just charged with a very serious crime, with blasphemy, with speaking against God and speaking against the temple in Jerusalem. So a man by the name of Caiaphas, the one in charge of the Sanhedrin, the chief priest of the day, confronts Jesus about this. Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 62. It says, Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? The crowd answered, He is worthy of death. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? And so here we see this charge that is brought against Jesus and the horrible scene that follows. And I want you to, as best as you can, I want you to get your, this scene in your mind just for a second. On the one side, we have Jesus, the, the Son of God himself, the creator of the world, the Messiah of the Jewish people. On the other side, we have the Sanhedrin the Supreme Court of the Jewish people, the religious leaders of the day, the ones who are really responsible to prepare for the way for the Messiah on this earth, to welcome God when he came to this earth. But instead of welcoming God, what did they do? They condemned him. They spit in his face. They hit him. Uh, imagine what it was like to be Jesus in that moment, shunned, scorned, beaten by his own people, the, by the very people he came to save, mocked by the very people who should have welcomed him with open arms. Why did they treat Jesus that way? Why did they reject him in that way? Well, actually, it's one of the same reasons that people today reject Jesus. You see, the religious leaders of the day, they wanted glory. They wanted power. They wanted honor. And they thought the Messiah was going to bring them that. It, it was believed at this time by many that when the Messiah came to this earth, he was going to restore the nation of Israel. He was going to make them the most significant nation on this earth. And when he did, that of course meant that the Sanhedrin, they would receive seats of honor in this new kingdom. And so that's what the Sanhedrin wanted. They wanted the Messiah to bring them glory and they wanted the Messiah to bring them power. But Jesus didn't bring that, at least not in the way that they were expecting. What Jesus brought instead was sacrifice. What Jesus brought was humility. And what Jesus made clear is that all who would follow him would have to follow his example. They would have to follow Jesus down the road of humility. They would have to follow Jesus down the road of sacrifice. That's what Jesus brought. And the Sanhedrin didn't want that. And so they wanted him dead. And you know what strikes me? Uh, we're learning something these days about humility, aren't we? And we're learning something these days about sacrifice. Some of the comforts that we're used to have been taken away from us. They've been stripped away from us. And this, for the world, is a very humbling time. And I think what we're learning from this is that sacrifice and humility, it's not easy. In fact, it's downright difficult. But I've noticed something. Among God's people, among the church, among the followers of Jesus, this season is truly bringing out the best in people. There, there's more stories than ever these days of the kindness of God's people. And that doesn't surprise me. Because what we're getting a taste of right now is the way of Jesus. The way of sacrifice, the way of humility, that is the way of Jesus. And that's what today is all about. And, and that's why we want to ask you to do something as we begin this time together. One of the ways that sacrifice is represented in the Bible is through fasting. They're going without food for a period of time to, among other things, remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And so from this point forward, throughout the rest of the day until dinner tonight, if you're able, we would encourage you to fast with us, to take a break from eating, or for those of you for whom that would be too difficult to do, to take a break from your phones, from TV, Netflix, something like that, and to spend some time in sacrifice today so that we can remember what Jesus endured for us. 
In fact, I'd love it if you could take it a step further today. We're trying in this time to provide food and supplies to families that need it. And so as you fast today, we wonder if you would consider coming by our church and dropping off supplies, sacrificing some of what we have so that others don't have to be without. And in order to find out more information about that, you can go to our website at the bottom of our screen. But for those of you who want to, we'd encourage you to, to join together with us in that. And as we close our, our first time together today, I'd love to pray a prayer over all of us to prepare us for the rest of the day. So wherever you are, would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. So Father, we come before you on this very significant day, Lord. And Father, we ask that you would just remind us today of all that your son Jesus did for us. And God, the fact that he sacrificed and came in humility, Lord, in order ultimately to save us from our sins. God, as we exist in this very strange, unique time right now, Lord, I pray that the sacrifice that all of us are experiencing right now would be a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made. And God, I pray that you would use today to draw us closer to you through your son, Jesus. And God, that you would use us to shine a light into a world that in this time, always, but in this time especially, they need Jesus, Father. And so we thank you for this journey that we get to take with your son, Jesus, today. And we pray that it would be used to, to just bless us, God, and to glorify you. And we ask this in your son's name. Amen. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Uh, our next Good Friday message will be posted around 12 o'clock today for those of you who want to continue along with us. But until then, may God bless each and every one of you on this very special day, and we will see you again soon.